Hey everybody, in this video you're going to get to see us pour a 32 by 28 concrete slab. Now the homeowner, who is about 70 years old, actually formed up the slab all by himself. He did all the dirt work and the grade work here. He just wanted us to pour and finish the concrete. So he basically got this all ready for us and just didn't want to pour the concrete on his own. So we're going to show you, you know, how we pour a slab like this. It was two trucks. It was about 20 yards of concrete. We're going to flatten it all out, level it, screed it, bowl float it, and you're going to get to see all that. So, hey, if you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing. I come up with a couple videos a week all about concrete. If you're a returning or you already are a subscriber, thanks again for tuning in. Now, the homeowner here is actually a general contractor in this area. He's kind of a builder, general contractor. So he knows a little bit about construction. And he actually did a pretty good job putting these forms up, getting them put in place, um, getting them staked and pinned, set to grade. Now, what we're going to do is, as we pour the concrete, you know, I did check the top of the forms. The top of the forms were, you know, they were actually pretty close. They were within about a quarter of an inch from being perfectly level. So as we pour the concrete, as you can see, I got my nice DeWalt laser set up there. I'm going to just check check the boards, check the top as we go and make sure we get the slab nice and perfectly level as we pour and screed the concrete. So what we're doing first is, you know, we got some front dumps today. If you've seen a lot of my other videos, you'll see we use rear dump trucks a lot. But the company we're using today actually has front dumps, so that's a little different for us. But we still needed our little extension chute. That's an eight foot chute that we can hook on the end of the concrete truck chutes just to get the concrete to flow a little bit further. And I'm using, you know, the homeowner, he didn't want any poly under this. He didn't want wire mesh in here. Now we are gonna drop a couple rows of rebar in the thickened edges. And you'll see that as we go. But we are using 3,500 PSI concrete with the fiber mesh reinforcement in it. So it does have reinforcement in it. We're using our normal water reducer in the concrete. So that allows us to pour a little bit looser slump like you see here, you know, between a six and a seven inch slump. The water reducer keeps the concrete at strength without having to add water to it, but you're able to pour it nice and loose like this. So if you don't use water reducer in your mud and your concrete is nice and dry when you pour it, consider trying some water reducer. A mid-range or even a high range and you'll be able to pour it nice and loose like we do work smarter not harder guys so we're gonna get the concrete poured out the first truck we usually you know on a, on a six inch slab like this with thickened edges you can dump out a truck pretty quick we usually like to get the whole first truck dumped right out before we do too much get them out of the way that way the second truck can get in start mixing up as we screed the first truck down so what we're doing is, you know, we've got three guys just kind of raking the concrete around. I'm going behind them, just checking the tops of the forms. And before we get the edges magged out, we're just going to drop in a couple rows of this number four rebar around the edges just for a little extra reinforcement. Now this will be, from what I understand, I'm pretty sure it's just going to be a single story garage. So there won't be a ton of weight on it. A lot of the slabs we do in Maine, they're monolithic monolithic slabs like this the edges are thickened to about 12 inches you know by a foot to two feet wide and then that tapers up into a six inch slab this one's got some really good gravel under it you know most guys they'll just they'll just take an excavator they'll dig out a couple feet of the existing soil bring in some nice three quarter inch crushed gravel compact it shape it up and then we'll pour the concrete slab right on top of that and we like, we like, before we screed, you can see I'm checking the level right there, make sure everything's going to be the exact same level all the way around the perimeter. The homeowner just wanted this flat, no slope to it. So it's just a flat slab. So we're going to go around, you know, we'll mag the edges. His forms were close enough so we could mag the edges to him. But then I'll come right behind Eric's kind of magging the edges and just check and make sure that everything looks good. If something needs just a little bit more concrete, you know, I'll raise it up like I'm doing right there. Or if the form is just a little high in that area, we'll just we'll just mag it down to where we need to get it. And then I'll put a little X on that spot to mark that it's right at grade. 
then the guys know when they go to screed that we got to strike it off this point right here to make sure everything matches that point. So the truck driver we had, he was a pretty experienced driver. He kind of knew what he was doing. He's, he's poured many slabs like this. The trick with having a driver with a front dump is just, you know, making sure that you're on the same page with them, they're on the same page with you, and they don't move the chute around too much before you actually get enough concrete where you need it so they got to keep coming back over what you're doing so just you know having a little bit of communication with them beforehand is kind of key and we got actually if you can just barely see it here but right in the middle of the slab there's a little pin i got like a rebar pin and it's got this yellow thing on it that you can tighten right at grade that's called crete pin pro and that's our grade in the middle so it gives us something to go by as we're pouring the concrete out and then I can come back and double check it since I got the laser set up just to make sure it didn't move you know in case somebody touches it with their boot or accidentally kicks it or something like that we're just gonna keep checking with the laser as we go we also what we did is before we started we ran a string around the perimeter of the forms right on top of it just to make sure we keep the forms nice and straight as we pour the concrete. Now the homeowner, he once he got the forms up, he put quite a bit of backfill up against the forms. So if anything, the forms were bowed in just a little bit. And then we're going to make sure as we pour that we straighten them using the string. So when we're all done, the forms will be, the edges will be all nice and straight. And we're getting right to where we're about halfway now so I'm expecting that concrete trucks gonna be running out of concrete here any minute we wanted to make sure we got to our center pin so we can mag our pad around that and that's gonna give us that's gonna give us something to screed by Eric keeps dumping the or dropping in the rebar around the edges so we can keep magging the edges we like to mag our edges first before we screed. That just helps keep the edges in the top of the forms, the wood forms, nice and clean as we screed off them. Some guys, I know I've seen just, they don't mag first. They'll just screed right off the rough concrete, right off top of form. And I guess if that works for you, that's fine too. We just like doing it this way. Now, if you want to learn how to pour concrete like us, if you want to learn how to set up slabs like this and do your own, Check out my link down below in the description, The Concrete Underground. I teach people how to do this in there. I have a training class in there. I have multiple training videos. So I teach people how to pour and finish concrete. Now on this video, this one, I don't have the power troweling on this one, but in all, a lot of my other videos, especially the training ones in The Concrete Underground, I've got multiple trainings on how to run a power trial in there, how to finish concrete by hand. So you can learn about all that kind of stuff in there if you want. You can see I'm double checking my my pad in the middle there just to make sure everything's nice and level. We don't want a little dip there. That's going to create what we call a bird bath when it rains. And we don't want to hump there either. We just want to get it as close to perfectly level as we can. So the first truck's empty. He's going to just pull up there, wash his chutes real quick and get out of the way. The second truck is actually sitting off off the video here you can't really see it but he is down there waiting for this first truck to get out of the way now what uh, Darren and Eric are doing is they're just going around and they're striking striking the edges to make sure they're nice and flat using the screed we we use a magnesium screed because we screed every single day so we don't use a 2x4 you know um, guys that do it every day have the right tools to do it and having that magnesium screed is one of the right tools to use for screeding that's a 14 footer right there and now what we're doing is we're screeding our what we call our wet pad in the middle to go by so we can get the rest of the concrete screeded down here there the guys are again just checking that edge make sure it's nice and flat on the edge before they before they use that pad to screed by and then this is how we screed a bay I call that a bay over there so we got two bays here to screed one on the left one on the right and we are what's calling kick screed and so two guys on a 14 foot screed can screed a bay down like that in about 
20 ish seconds. 20 seconds. I don't know, I didn't time it, but I'm just guessing. So that's pretty fast. Get the concrete screeded. It takes longer to actually dump it out of the truck than it does to screed it this way. We only use a screed with one guy if it's, you know, maybe under 10 feet. So we have four footers, six footers, eight footers, even 10 foot screeds like this with magnesium screeds. So if it's less than less than 10 feet, usually, you know, one guy will grab it and do it by himself. But if they're longer than that, we like doing it with two people. It's pretty fast. Now here I am teaching Luke. Luke on the right is brand new at this. So I'm kind of teaching him how to kick screed the way we do. We like teaching the new people as soon as possible how to do the screeding. That way, anybody on the crew can just jump right in and grab the screed and we can go and get the concrete down as fast as possible. One good way to teach the kicking method like what we do is if the, if the new person can screed right off the top of the form, so then he can just kind of focus on the, the rhythm of screeding and kicking at the same time and not have to worry about if he's getting the concrete to grade or not because he's riding the screed right on top of the form. So this is a good way to, to teach a new guy how to screed is use your top of your form if you can. He actually did a pretty good job there. It is, it's, it's a little bit harder than it does look at first. But once you get enough practice with it, it, it gets pretty easy. It's kind of just like riding a bike at first. You know, it's a little difficult getting your balance. But once you get it, boom, you're off and going. So there's the first truck down. That was about, I think that was 10, 10 and a half yards right there. And the second truck's got the same. And we'll get it dumped right out. Again, we'll dump out 90 some odd percent of this second truck, get right down to a corner, and then leave that corner just a little bit low. So in case we're in case we're getting it a little high as we're raking it around, we'll have a little bit of you know a, conc a little bit of a low spot to pull the high into. Eric's over there on the right. He's kind of magging the edges while he's putting the rebar in, checking the forms with the string, making sure the forms stay straight. Now, if the forms are bowed in a little bit, we'll just we'll just usually either dig out a little bit of the backfill, dig the dirt behind it, or we'll just grab a like a two-pound sledgehammer and tap on the inside of the form to pound it out a little bit. What our plan is usually what our plan is for a day is, you know, we'll have concrete ordered for first thing in the morning, usually at 6 a.m concrete or 7 a.m. concrete depending on what company we're using today was 7 a.m. concrete so we'll we'll show up we'll pour this we'll leave one maybe two guys here to finish it power trial it saw it and then the rest of us will go either pour something else if we can get concrete for the second round or we'll get jobs ready for you know this week rest of this week or the following week or even the week after whether we're going to form up another slab, maybe like this, whether we're going to, you know, shoot grades and, and snap chalk lines on inside of a foundation somewhere. We could be forming up a pool deck. We do a lot of concrete patios around pools. We do a lot of stamp concrete, so we could be setting up a concrete patio. There's just, there's always usually something to do. We do a lot of epoxy coatings. We could be going to grind a concrete floor and getting it ready for an epoxy coating. So if you're wondering, some guys are, I know some guys will comment like, why do you need so many guys on a pour? It's not that we need them. It's just, it makes the job go a lot easier. If everybody just shows up and get the concrete poured as fast as possible and then just leave one or two guys to finish, then the rest of us go do something else. It's just the way we like doing things. You know, when I learned concrete, when I started out back in the 80s, so 40-something years ago, we were always shorthanded. The guy I worked for, we were always shorthanded doing concrete. So we would we actually started out on more a little bit bigger stuff, some kind of commercial stuff. So sometimes 2,000, 3,000, 5,000, 10,000 square feet pours. And we'd always, we'd never have enough guys, so we were always working twice as much as we should. 
it seemed like. So when I started my own company, I didn't really want to do follow in those footsteps. I wanted to make sure, you know, hey, we I want to make sure we got plenty of guys to do the job and do it right, make sure it comes out really nice. So I don't mind having a couple extra guys pouring something, what we consider something small like this. As long as we got work to do afterwards, you know, and we don't have five guys standing around, you know, finishing this too, just doesn't make sense. So I just do the thing, I do things the way I like doing them. And, you know, if you think I got too many guys on my job, then you just do things the way you want to do it then, I guess. I don't know what else to say. All right, so we're a little bit over halfway with the screeding. You can see how we left that left side a little bit low. In case we get it a little high here, we can pull it into that low area. And then the concrete driver, you know, most concrete drivers that I know that we work with have patience enough, so they're just going to sit there and wait. They're not going to fill that right up and then say, hey, you know, I got to get out of here. I got to wash this up and get out of here. You know, let's fill this up. That's just, that's not how it works with us. They'll just wait patiently until we get to where we need them. And generally, and in most cases, we're fast enough, so, you know, they're not going to do that anyway. But I wouldn't, if you get on a concrete job and the, and the truck driver is trying to hurry you and you're moving at a pretty good pace, generally you got enough, generally you got about seven minutes a yard to get a concrete truck dumped out. It says on their slip, like, the, like he's got a concrete slip in there that he gives you a copy of. And they usually have a time limit on there for you to get the concrete dumped off the truck. And then if you go over that time limit, then they're going to charge you extra. So that's just something you should know in advance if you're just doing this yourself. Or just ask them when you call up and order the concrete. You know, hey, if you're ordering 10 yards of concrete, just ask them how much time do you have to unload this truck. That's how we like to do it. Now we can get that as close as possible without getting too much in there. I mean, if we have to shovel out a little bit, half a wheelbarrow or something, that's not a big deal. But we don't want to be shoveling out much more than that, making a mess out in the driveway. I think I said this a little bit earlier. Usually what takes the longest is just getting the concrete out of the truck you know, running down the chute, getting it put in place when the slab's six inches thick and the edges are that thick versus doing many of the other parts of this, really. But again, I just want to, you know, the title of the video was the homeowner, 70-year-old homeowner formed up his own slab. He did a good job. Just, you know, in, if you know what you're doing, if you have a little bit of an idea how to form up a slab for concrete, you know, that might be something you can do. If you're thinking of doing a slab, maybe it's a little smaller, maybe it's for a, a shed or a garage, and, you know, you, you don't really know what to do, but you want to try it yourself. It's If it's small enough, you think you might want to try it yourself. Again, I got training videos that'll teach you how to do that, at least give you an idea about if you think you can accomplish that or not on your own. You know, I... I I detail that out in step, step one, step two, step three. I go into great detail in those training videos about what it takes to be able to do something like this on your own in case you do want to check that out and see if it's something you can do. Now we make it, we may actually make the porn look pretty easy here, but remember we do this every day. We do it for a living. Some of us have been doing it, like I've been doing it for 40 years. Darren, the guy in the yellow, he's been doing it for 30 years. Um, the guy in the middle with the concrete rake, Luke, the guy with the blonde hair, he's been working for me 25-ish years. So if it's something you've been doing your whole life, then it's usually something you can make look pretty easy. But a lot of people do try to attempt this on their own with not knowing just what to expect. So if you want to know what to expect, again, link is down below, the Concrete Underground. Check it out. Other than that, I just want to say, hey, good job to the, good job to the guy that formed this up, made pouring it actually pretty easy. You know, we'll finish up bull floating this. We'll put in some anchor bolts for him. We'll end up there's going to be two garage doors. We'll taper that where the doors are. We'll put a power trowel on here. We'll power trowel it nice and smooth. We'll put some saw cuts in it for joints to help control any shrinkage cracking. 
But all in all, everything went really well, and I want to thank you for watching. We'll see you on the next one.